Well hey, and welcome to the ICH2 review of the Western Master train set by Hornby, featuring E-Link. This is the train set you chose to look at, so this is the one we're going to look at right now. Um, what is there to say? Well, <laughs> it's definitely much more advanced than the other one. This whole digital E-Link thing really does stand out, and I'm really keen to see what it's like to be honest. Just look how fancy that is. Um, as far as I understand it, it's going to be sending digital signals through the rails to a DCC chip inside the locomotive. And you'll, you should be pretty much be able to control everything um, from your laptop. Um, I've saved this review until later on in the day because the sun's just starting to go down. So as it does, it should make looking at my laptop screen much easier. Um, I shall go get my laptop in a bit. Um, I don't need it just yet. Let's have a look at what you get first. So, as I say, you get an 060 locomotive with this set, which is much nicer than the 040. It is a Hornby pannier tank, so it's not the best pannier out there, but it'll do. It's pretty good. It's not a basic locomotive anyway. It's not your basic 040. It's, it's much nicer. You get, oh gosh, a, a Lomac. Hmm, these, these wagons here have a, a tendency to derail. Although maybe they've fixed it, maybe they've stopped derailing now, but um, they do have a little bit of a tendency to derail, so it's not a particularly favourite um, wagon of mine. And then you've got like some sort of generic wagon with a uh, GW brake van on the end, which is quite nice. I've never seen them do that before, so that's quite fancy. Oh, just look at that. Look at that controller. It looks so strange. So that's obviously the data cable. That's your transformer. That's your controller. That's the software for your laptop um, or whatever computer you're using to power it. Um, that's your power track, and then you've got some straights, some more straights, your point, your point corrector, which is just half a second radius curve, I think. Some third radius curves. Um, you get a track mat as well. Um, control this set with your Windows PC. Now, I'm not too sure if it is available for Mac. Um, I think they might be bringing out a version for Macs, but right now it's definitely um, available on Windows. Um, included in this train set is the state-of-the-art e-link unit and the amazing Railmaster train control software. Once the Railmaster software has been loaded onto your Windows PC, the full power of both the Railmaster software and the e-link can be experienced. Hmm. For this train set to function, a Windows PC must be connected to the e-link unit. Well, I think most of us have got a Windows PC, haven't we, these days? Um, if I just flip it over, um, it's the, the standard stuff that Hornby give you now. Um, they put this on nearly every box they do, don't they? So these are all the um, little extension packs that you can buy. And as you buy them, um, your layout gradually builds and builds and builds until you see something like that. Um, but what's quite fancy is that they've got a laptop there plugged into the e-link system, plugged into the track, and they're obviously controlling the layout using the laptop. Really fancy. Hmm, this could take some time. It's certainly going to be a longer review than the other one. Okay, what does this say? Included in this train set is the state of the art, but we've read that bit. Um, complete control via your Windows PC. Not included. What, really? I mean, there's no top of the range Sony Veo Ultrabook in here. Oh, I don't know. No good. <laughs> Visual control of all locomotives. No need to remember locomotive numbers as they are displayed on the screen. That's quite fancy, isn't it? Can accommodate 9,999 locomotives. Oh, gosh, damn. I've got 10,001. And over 2,000 points and electrical accessories. <sighs> Do you know, to be quite perfectly honest, you would f you'd, you'll would you find that you've run out of power before you get anywhere near that much. You're going to need so many repeaters to have that much stuff active all at the same time. But it's good that it can do it. USB link for connection to Windows PC can also be used to download software upgrades via the internet. Hmm, that's fancy. Change points with a simple click of the mouse once connected to a Hornby accessory decoder, not included. Right, okay, so we're not going to be changing any points with the click of our mouse today then. Um, active matrix style track layout for easy operation of points and accessories. Well, what do you mean by that, active matrix style? Is that the, is that the design of the software? Yes, it looks like it is, doesn't it? I was going to say, either that or there's a free leather jacket in here and, uh, you know, like a, a, a Mac, a huge big um, trench coat thing and 
lots of green flashy random text shoots down the down the monitor. Yeah, <laughs> simple double heading locomotive control. That could, could be interesting. Scale clock and timer. Hmm, is that to allow realistic running? Smartphone compliant. Cool. So you can probably connect it. Well, when it says smartphone compliant, it, I suppose it depends what smartphones the software is available for. Um, I know it's. I'm pretty sure it's the. Uh, I'm pretty sure they do make the software available for um, iOS, um, iPhones, and iPads and stuff. But I'm not too sure if it's available for Android. Um, I'm not too sure if it's available for Windows Phone, um, and it probably definitely isn't available for BlackBerry. So you'd have to check that before you uh, go into that, obviously, because everybody's got different phones and stuff. So there we go. We've had a good look at the box. Let's get it open. Okay, genuinely, I have never opened one of these sets before. Okay, I have never opened an Elink test, um, set before. I don't know what the system's like at all. So, this is completely new to me as it is to you. Um, there's usually a trap mat and stuff that comes out at this point. Oh, but I can't see one. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Again, mega tight fit. Really quite hard to get out, actually. Okay, so. Just shuffle it back into shot. There we go. So this is our software. The Hornby Railmaster PC Model Railway Control System. Mm, with E-Link. Fancy. Looks pretty good. I'm looking forward to it. Um, the real way to run a digital railway. And basically everything with just red, I think. Oh wow, read and write locomotive CV. Now that's interesting. If this locomotive genuinely is a DCC chips locomotive, and I assume it is, it, it, it implies that basically I'm going to be able to use this software um, running on my laptop to change the CV values of um, all, the DC locomo all the DCC locomotives I have without having the need to get a special big fancy DCC controller, which I haven't done yet, so that's quite cool. Um, Oh, that's even more cool! PC operation using either Windows 98, ME 2000, NTXP, Vista, boo, 7 and 8! Well, that's excellent. Um, I do think we've still got a few old servers running Windows XP. Uh, most of the computers in the house are Windows 7 and my Ultrabook is Windows 8. So that's brilliant. One touch control of points, signals and accessories. Ah, oh, yes! And I've got a touch screen Ultrabook as well. I'm really looking forward to this. This should be very, very cool. I'm getting my hopes of why. I'm getting excited. It could be a massive disappointment and crash, but we'll see. Right, so what have we got? Um, let's open the, the boring stuff first. Let's get through this and see what we get. It could be different to any other set we've got that you see, so it's definitely worth having a look at. Oh, an addendum to um, M6, M640 quick start instruction sheet. Installing the E-Link driver and running. Uh, second. Oh, right, so this is a change in the instructions. Um, please note that in some instances the E-Link driver will be identified in the device manager as a new USB serial port. Hmm. If you have any other serial ports showing and have trouble identifying which is. Blah, 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 Windows 7, a detailed driving installation guide, uh, contact customer care if you need to. Hmm, okay, so obviously there's something there about the driver perhaps being a little bit funny depending on how you set it up and how your computer's set up. We'll have to look at that when we get to it, won't we? We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Hey, um, a Type M motor, 060 steam locomotive. So this is your maintenance sheet for an 060, such as the pannier tank over there. Um, so how to take the body off, um, how to, oh that's quite cool, oh you have to, oh right, I see, you have to take that off in order to get the body off, oh, okay, fair enough. Um, ignore that there, that's obviously the, the, um, the Class 8 uses the, uses the same chassis, try saying that when you're drunk. Replacing the locomotive body, and does it tell us about lubrication as well? Usually it does, hmm, maybe it doesn't. There's usually a little thing that... Oh, it's a staged one. There we go. Again, yeah, you only need a cocktail stick. Just a tiny, tiny bit of oil. Yeah, trust me. 
Um, less is definitely more. So that's quite good. Oh, Hornby Locomotive Decoder. Of course, because it's going to be DCC fitted. I thought it would be. So there's a chip inside the pannier tank then. Um, this, this, this could be really cool, you know, folks. Seriously, this, this could, this, this, this could be a game changer. <laughs> this could be really, really good. I mean, I'm even thinking. I think it was somebody that suggested using the e-link system to control the N-gauge layout for the N-gauge project, so the software can be running on Craig's computer and my computer. Oh, this is seriously exciting. Whoa, oh, Italian, Deutsch, and Espanol. No, we don't, we don't need any of that. Um, a list of supported CVs. Wow. Look at all that. Acceleration rate, primary address, EMF feedback. Oh, I don't have a clue what half of that is, you know. Um, but it looks really, really cool. Really good. So, again, we'll come to it when we need it. I don't know when that will be. Um, quick start guide for the Railmaster E-Link system. Ah, wow. Okay, well, I'm not going to bore you with all of the details of this. What I will do is read it off camera and then just jump straight to it and, and show you it being all set up, basically. So I'll read that off camera in a minute. But that's how to set up the evening system. This is your warranty registration card. Um, th with this being such a technical set, I definitely recommend doing that just in case something does go wrong. Um, this is their product guide again. Um, we saw this in the other the other train set, and we've seen this in quite a few other train sets now. Basically everything that they've currently got. Um, I say currently because it'll be out of date in no time, won't it? Oh, they're, they're quite cool. Yeah, nice wagons. Um, the owner's manual, again, definitely, definitely aimed at people that are completely new to the hobby and haven't got a clue. Um, just shows you how to set up your baseboards, how to uncouple and couple the wagons, how to power it even, and even when doing a reverse loop and stuff. So it's really quite useful. It's nice for them to put that in because, you know, a few years ago they, they weren't doing that. So that's quite a cool thing to do. Um, the collector, the Hornby Collector Club. Um, it depends on how good the locomotive is, to be honest. Sorry, just getting comfy. It depends how good the locomotive is. I have joined, I think I did join it for a year or two, but the locomotive was a bit rubbish after that, and so I stopped. Um, you did used to get discounts in places like Model Zone, but at the time of filming, Model Zone don't exist, so I don't know what use the uh, Hornby membership card would be. Um, although you do get discounts inside the Hornby store, although that's hundreds of miles away down in Kent, I think. So, uh, what is quite nice is you do get this like little magazine that comes through every couple of months and in there there's usually kids that have taken photos of their layouts and they do an in-depth look at the Tornado or an in-depth look at the 9F and that's quite a nice thing but whether it's really worth it, I don't know. I mean you're paying for the little locomotive aren't you really? So that's that. And then you've got your track mats which um, we're, we're, I'm sure we're all pretty used to and familiar with now. And so you'll see me set that up in a second. Right, let's get onto the box then. Um, all the boring stuff out of the way. What shall I look at first? Oh, well, let's have a look at this e-link system, shall we? Wow, well, it's nice and slim. Look at that. I was expecting it to be much bigger. I don't know why. I just was. Ugh. So let's just carefully open the bag. Wow. Oh, hey, that's weird. Again, I thought this would be a raised section of the unit, but it's not. It's sunk. Oh, it's very shiny. Wow. <laughs> this is really cool. I mean, are all manufacturers going to do this now? Are Batman going to do this as well? And Helgen and... Graham Farish, which is also Batman. Oh my gosh, sorry, apologies for the noise. Oh, that didn't want to come off, did it? Again, apologies if your ears are bleeding right now. So there we have it, look at that. Now that is cool, <laughs> especially how it's reflecting the, um, the light cluster in the top of the conservatory there. So you've got some sort of grill there, some sort of mesh. I don't know if that's because it makes sounds or if that's to keep it cool. You've got a single light. 
you've got some um, clips here, some connectors, and they're all nice and stiff, which is really good. A, B, A, B. So that's track and that's program. Is that the one that goes to the computer? Maybe? Um, and then on the other side, oh, wow. No, I guess that's what, I guess that goes to the computer. That's the USB socket. And then there's the power socket. It really is so compact and it's so lightweight as well. It's like there's nothing in there. Oh, such technology today. It's amazing. Well, not me knowing around, I would say. So, that's the E-Link system. I can't wait to plug it in and see what it's like. It's just, it's so strange not having a controller there. It's really, really weird. It's going to take some getting used to. Um, that's the transformer. <laughs> Again, sorry, it doesn't turn into Optimus Prime or anything like that. It's just to cut down the power to make it safe so you don't kill yourself which is obviously a good thing. Um, oh, almost didn't notice that. We've got a little buffer in there as well. I do like these buffers. Um, you can make them look really realistic. Just spray the whole thing white and then make it all dead rusty, put a little light on the top. Absolutely beautiful. Can you hear that jet going over? I'm gonna press on. I'm gonna carry on. I'm gonna ignore the jet because um, I don't want to interrupt my flow. <laughs> so this is a bag of cables. There should be two cables in here. Yes, here we go. So that's obviously what goes into your computer. And then that's what goes into your E-Link system. Just here. Look. See? Like that. Um, so I'll get the um, Ultrabook down in a second. And then these are the cables which go to your track. Hmm. Wow. Right. Uh, the track... It's nice track. Hornby's track is fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it at all. Um, it's not as good as Pico track, but it is good. It will serve you well, especially if you look after it. So you've got a whole stack of third radius curves here, which is really nice because they're nice gentle curves. And well, as I say, they'll, they'll give you years and years of sterling performance, provided you do look after them. And then you've got your points and your um, point corrector which is basically just half of a second radius curve, I think. Um, and as you can see why I call it a point corrector in that it's going to make the points, you know, it's going to make the siding um, run parallel with, with the main line here, so that's quite good. So there you little switch blades just here, and that's the mechanism. And obviously you can mount this to baseboards, can't you? And then you can fit little point motors that go up through the baseboards and just control that with a little pin there, so that's quite good. Um, and then you've got a long straight, another long straight, a short straight, another short straight, and then your power track, um, which you're going to have to push the little pins down at some point, aren't you? So that you can plug these in just like that. And there's one, and there's the other. Yeah. So that's what we'll do later. You'll see me do that later. It's all coming up, don't worry. Um, I'm just going to get comfy again and try and not knock the camera. Right, let's look at the locomotive first, shall we? So, for some reason that's in plastic cellophane rather than the typical Hornby tissue paper. And oh, there's no hole in the bottom either. So, we're going to pull it out using this cellophane. There we go. Hey, that's quite, that's quite cool actually, that worked very well. Well done, Hornby. Now, do you know what? That's actually rather nice. That is actually rather nice. Um, there's quite a bit of weight to it, for a start. Certainly more than the um, the budget uh, Class 08, you know, the, the railroad Class 08, which uses the same chassis. There's actually quite a bit more weight to this. That's really nice. Um, the detail is only basic though. You have got a handrail. That's impressive. <laughs> but the buffers are not sprung, I'm afraid. At least they do look metal, but they're not sprung. Uh, the tension lock couplers are huge. Oh, that's a little bit bent. Hmm, never mind. Uh, the tension lock couplers are huge, so again, a little bit unrealistic, but it's going to work well on tight bends and stuff, so, you know, swings and roundabouts. Um, again, you've got some handrails on the back there. Um, you've got a nice bit of Deep, uh, buffer beam detailing. You've got a tiny little hole where the vacuum brakes go. Did we come across the vacuum brakes? 
Where did the vacuum... Um... Oh, there they, there they are. I didn't even notice them. Oh, look, we've got a couple of firemen as well. So, well, uh, a fireman and a driver. And those are the vacuum um, pipes there, the vacuum tubing. So, yes, they basically just clip into um, this tiny little hole there and the tiny little hole there. Whoa, a little bit of a close-up shot there. So, GWR, Great Western Railway, um, absolutely beautiful railway. And you can see some cab detail there. Not very much, but a little bit. Um, some fake coal, which does look a bit naff, to be honest, a little bit cheapo. Um, but it's, you know, it's there. I particularly like the um, the whistle and the safety valve on the top. That's well, I think this is the safety valve, isn't it? This this cluster, but these whistles are oh, they're just so cute. Um, that's your your dome. That's where all your steam collects before you know you can you control that with the regulator, the, and um, it gets sent off down to the cylinders that are in the middle. Oh look, DCC fitted. Oh nice. And again, you've got the um, you know, typical copper-plated uh, chimney there, uh, which is the, the, the GWR all over, isn't it, basically? And it's a really nice touch. I do like that. It's such a lovely colour. It's such a rich, orange, coppery colour. It's just beautiful. And so, even though it is a basic pannier locomotive compared to uh, the ones that Batman make, it's really nice. <laughs> I do like it. It's... It, I I mean, it's the, I think it's my first Hornby Pannier, actually. I'm sure it is. Yeah. So I really do like it, and it really is quite heavy. It's hurting my arm. So, as we can see, it's a DCC-fitted locomotive. And, well, we'll just have to see how well it performs later on once we've got it all wired up, won't we? Um, right, let's have a quick look at the rest of the rolling stock, then. So, you've got your low mat here, with its load which you can glue down if you want to. Here you go. So that's your low Mac. As I say, they do have a tendency to derail, um, but maybe they've fixed it. I don't know. Although the wheels... Oh gosh, the wheels are... Are they plastic? Yeah, the, the wheels look plastic on the low Mac. That's how cheap the low Mac is. Um, and they've give, they provided you with this. And if I just take that out... What you do is you can take this sticky pad off, stick it onto there, and then basically you just clip the load over the top. But to be honest, what I prefer to do is to just get rid of this and um, stick a nice Jag E-Type on there or something. Well, whatever your car, whatever your you know, Aston Martin, Lamborghini, whatever your favourite car is, you can just stick it down onto one of these and pretend you're having it delivered. <laughs> and maybe you will in, one, in real life one day as well. So, what else have we got? Gonna have to do a lot more videos for that, Will. Okay, this is, well, it's a pretty basic wagon to be honest. Very generic, very lightweight, very cheap. Um, metal wheels though, which is good. The other one didn't have metal wheels. Um, probably completely fictitious company. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. If anyone's in Swansea and they've heard of these, comment below, let me know. Um, and then finally, a rather nice brake van, I think you'll agree. Look at that. GW, Great Western. Um, Gloucester. Yeah, that, well, that's definitely down in that sort of territory, isn't it? Um, not too far from some very nice places, Gloucester. Um, but the corner of the Cotswolds, I think. Beautiful part of the country. So, there you have your Great Western uh, brake van in black with a nice white roof. It does look a little bit unrealistic. It could do with some weathering, to be honest. A little bit of a touch-up. And it's a little bit light as well. But it's nice to include it. Uh, they often don't include brake fans these days. So it's nice to get one. That's really quite good. Um, again, giant tension lock, though. Um, not very realistic. But, again, they are reliable. They'll, they'll serve you well, especially on small, compact, tight layouts. So, We've had a look at all the rolling stock, we've had a look at the track, we've had a look at the controllers, we've had a look at everything. <sighs> it's time to go get the computer. Okay, so there we can see that the track mat has all been laid out, and it just about fits inside the space I have in the conservatory here. So I'm going to um, lay all the track out now. 
Okay, so as you can see that we've got, um, I'm just going to use this piece of <laughs> assembled track I've got here as a great pointer. Hmm. Over there we've got some um, third radius curves all on the track mat, and here we've got some more third radius curves. And I'm just about to put this section here, just up there like that. But before I did, I just wanted to show you how you assemble the um, points, how you put the buffers on, the points, how you put the buffers on. Um, I've assembled the points, they're there. And it's really quite simple, but I just thought I'd show you because I still get people asking me how you do it, um, especially younger viewers. And basically, um, you just take your buffers and you see the two prongs at the back. Well, you just need to position them between the rails, but make sure you're nowhere near any sleepers, um, sorry, not sleepers, rail joiners, fish plates. Make sure you're nowhere near them, and then just pinch that so that it's, it fits inside. And then all you do is just push down at this end. And then you hear a clip, and another clip, and that's it. It's in place, done, locked. That's not going anywhere. Really, really nice. Of course, you have lost a fair chunk of track in doing that, so what a lot of people do is they just buy other buffers, buy other manufacturers that just sit on the end. Um, or you can even get like a little bit of extra track and add it onto the end just for the buffers, and that way you haven't lost any siding. But that is done and ready to uh, connect. So if we just come over to this part of the layout, we should be able to get that joined up. Pretty straightforward. Oh, he says it's pretty straightforward. It'd help if um, both bits of rail and fish plate were lined up like that. Give it a good push. It is quite hard. Um, and the sleepers do dig into your fingers and hands a little bit, but with some practice you get there. So there's just a little bit more track to put down and then we're done. One. Okay, so there we have it. You can see all the tracks in place. We've got our siding over there in the background. Um, here is the little piece of power track where we're going to connect it into the controller, you know, well, the E-Link system. And in the middle I've just put the uh, Pannier Loco and it's rolling stock. So I will actually set that up, I think, um, if I just carefully grab it. Uh, I'm going to put the brake van on this siding along with the wagon and the low loader, the low mac. Um, I haven't secured the box down, it's cargo because I don't think I want to. I think I want to put a car on it yet. Or maybe some some other sort of cargo. But it's all in the siding, ready to go. Um, I'll leave the pannier locomotive off for now. And what we need to do now is connect up the e-link system. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is set up the e-link system, which is just here. Oh, look how fancy that is. <laughs> Um, if people are wondering why I've left this filming till you know really late at night when it's pitch black outside and stuff, it's so that you can see the laptop more clearly. Um, in the middle of the day, it's quite hard to look at the screen on the laptop. It's quite hard to see the screen on camera. I mean, I can see it fine, but you wouldn't be able to see a thing. So I have left it until this time to make it as easy and as clear as possible. So that's, that's that. <laughs> um, right. So here is our data cable then. Um, oops, there we go. Now I don't think it matters which end goes into what, it's just the cable. But I shall consult the manual first. Right, okay, so I'm back. I've read all of that. You know, it took about 10, 15 minutes. Um, it's quite confusing in places because obviously I haven't got any of the screen and the software in front of me to fully understand it, so some of it will become clear as we go on. But the cable is simple enough. Um, all I need to do is to just create a little bit of slack at that end, and then a little bit of slack at this end. And what I'm plugging it into is the section marked track, just on the left here. Um, the one on the right is well, it says prog, so it could be for your programming track, or it could be for accessories, I'm not too sure yet. But, either way, it's not something I need to worry about just yet. So, um, is this cable got a stripe? Yes. 
this cable has got a stripe. So I'm going to put the stripey one into the black clip, like that, and then the non-stripey one into the red clip. So again, I put the stripe one, not that it makes any difference, um, into the black one. So I'm going to put that there, and I'm going to put the non-stripey one just there, like that. So there we go. That cable is now connecting, if I just wrap it up a little bit, that is now connecting the e-link system to our track. So before I do anything with um, a USB cable, because one thing the, men, the, um, the guide did say is to install the software on your computer first, is I'm just going to plug this in. Um, do I need to plug this in right now? Yeah, I can plug this in right now. I'm not going to actually power it all up yet, but I'm going to plug it all in. So I can do that quite easy. Okay, well just as it starts to rain outside, so apologies if you can hear that. Um, we've got everything plugged in. The USB cable's ready, waiting to go, so the only other thing we need is a computer. So here we go, here is my Ultrabook, um, but any computer should be able to do it, whether it's a huge big 10 year old laptop or a compact little thing like this. Um, so if we just wait for this to power up, here we go. Okay, so, well, this is where we hit our first snag. Or rather, I hit my first snag. You see, the Railmaster software is on a CD-ROM. And my Ultrabook has no CD-ROM drive. It has no optical drive at all. To save on space and battery power, it basically uses cloud computing and stuff. So there's no optical drive at all. Hmm. And this is something that is going to become increasingly common as optical drives slowly start to die off. So, we've got two options. I can either run this disk on one of my other computers and then maybe transfer all of its files into a USB port, well, like a USB pen or something, or I can create an ISO image of it and mount a USB drive so that the laptop thinks it's got an optical drive plugged in when it hasn't. You could also, of course, just connect an optical drive to your optical driveless computer. Um, they, you can pick them up for about 20, 30 pounds and just sit it at the side, plug it in, and you're good to go. But I, I haven't got one of those because I haven't seen one I like. <laughs> so um, I'm going to have to either put it onto a USB drive, well, I'm going to have to put it onto a USB drive no matter what I do, aren't I? And run the software that way. So I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I'm back, and I come bearing gifts. We've got a little USB pen, well, USB drive, whatever. This is the software, and I've even printed off some Windows 8 driver installation um, instructions. Hornby are very good. They've done a very, very good job, and they've covered all eventualities. They've even had a little dig at Microsoft about how Microsoft have made it so hard and so difficult to properly set up drivers these days. Um, you know, with all the billions of security things that they have all over the place, how it, it's really, really difficult to do. So they have covered every possible eventuality just to help you get set up and get running. And that's really, really good of them. Um, so this is the software, as you can see. Um, I've had to cover up the activation key there. <laughs> Uh, so yes, underneath there is the activation key for the software, but what I've done is taken basically that disk, put it into my main computer, run it up in the optical drive, and then copied everything to here, to Henry, to this little USB drive. Um, it's only a 4 gig one, and all of the files came to about 500 meg or something like that, so there's plenty of space. Um, I know it's not ideal, and it's a little bit of a nuisance, not everybody's going to be in a position where they can do that. Well, even Hornby might not be happy with what I've done, but tough. <laughs> there is nothing else I can do right now. So, it's, um, it's tough, basically. So if we go onto the desktop, um, 
Is that coming across as too bright for you? If I just pull this thing in at the side, I should be able to dim it. Um, no, I can't. I need to do a restart. So I shall do a restart and see you in a second. Right, let's get logged in then and set this software up. So I should be able to adjust, oops, I should be able to adjust the brightness now. Yeah, there we go. So you can see that I'm adjusting the brightness of the laptop there. So I'm going to try and look at the screen and look at the viewfinder as well until we get a level that looks pretty good. I think that looks pretty good. Um, but, well, we'll see. Okay, so I need to pop the USB drive just in the side. I think my USB ports are down here. I think there's a USB 2 and a USB 3. So I'll just pop that in there like that. Okay, it's hard to choose what happens with this removable drive. Well, I did, but maybe you didn't read it. So if I just tap down here, we can see that there's Henry just here. So if we double tap him. So there's all the software. This is what I'm on about. They've been brilliant. Hornby have done something that is totally amazing, by the way. If you go into this folder here called Hornby Loco Service Sheets, if I just double click that, look at this. All the service sheets for all their locomotives in PDF format. So if I just open this class 31. Do I agree? Yes, of course I do. What am I going to do? Say no. Yeah, thanks for telling me. I know that lots of different apps can open it. Useful. So look at that. Hornby Class 31 locomotive instruction sheets. And if I close that down and I go to Class 47, there we have Class 47 locomotive 5 pole. So it's like everything they've ever printed off in the past God knows how many years, all in PDF format. They didn't have to do that. None of that has any bearing on the set we're looking at today, but they've done it anyway, and that is brilliant. <laughs> that is really, really impressive. Um, well done, Hornby. Major, major brownie points earned there. Major. So, um, what have we got? Elite Firmware 1.3, Elite Firmware 1.4, Hornby DCC manuals, Hornby logo service sheets, PDF readers. <laughs> Just in case you're not happy with the Adobe one, I don't know. Um, a guide in English, uh, Railmaster video, there's even a video. Um, I can't show you all of it because Hornby might be angry at me. Um, I doubt it, but it's not my video, so I can't properly show you all of it. But yeah, here we go. Um, this is basically just a little video on how to set it all up and stuff. I mean, this is fantastic. It's really, really good of them. They didn't have to do this, but it's there. And that is brilliant. So, what I'm going to have to do now is set the drivers up. Okay, I'm back just literally for a second um, to tell you that um, the reason I've downloaded these in separate instructions is because it talks about additional security hurdles to pass if you're running Windows 8. And as you can see, this Ultrabook is definitely running Windows 8. So, um, Something else it also says is that you definitely, definitely need to install the drivers for the eLink unit before you actually install and activate your Railmaster software. So this is a separate thing on its own. This can run with the Elite controller as well as the eLink controller. So this has to come after you have set up the eLink unit. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm back again. <laughs> Sorry, I keep doing this, don't I? Um, something that the instructions say is that you need to plug in the Elite or E-Link using a high quality shielded USB cable. Well, we've been given a cable, uh, but even though I've plugged everything in, nothing has happened. So I think that basically you've got to turn the power on. So let's just test that theory and give the E-Link unit power and then see what happens. Yep, I was right. So, everything has burst into life now that we've given it power. So, I'll go back to the instructions and see you again in a second. Right, okay, I know everything looks really serious at the moment, but I think it's actually done it. I think it's, much, it's been much simpler than I was anticipating. Um, over here, do you remember this 
really tiny little piece of toilet paper that we um, got out of the packaging right at the very start. Well, it talks about how it says, please note that in some instances, the e-link driver will be identified in the device manager as a new USB serial port. And on my uh, Veo Ultrabook here, if we go into ports, you can see that there's a brand new one there called USB serial port COM3. In fact, I might be able to get a camcorder to just zoom in on that. Um, if I just turn the camera a little bit. Yeah, you can see there, USB serial port COM3. And that wasn't there before. And in fact, if I disconnect this cable, it goes. Bang, gone. And then if I plug the e-link in again, it's there again. So I think it is functioning. I think it's there. I think Windows can see it. And I don't need to go through any of this. But, um, yeah. But I could be wrong. So <laughs> I'm going to zoom out again. And then maybe install the Railmaster software and see how far we get. Okay, I'm back again. And if I just close all this off. Um, I, I do think I'm done. I think I'm ready to go. Um, one thing it does talk about um, is the rail clips. Before building your layout, you should fit the supplied point clips to each point. This will carry power to all parts of your track. Um, you should also ensure that the power clip cables and all track pieces are connected correctly as your trains will not run correctly otherwise. Yeah, this is basically, if we just swing the camcorder right round, you see that siding over there? Um, well, the DCC clips are already in place. I don't know if the camcorder can pick it up. If I zoom right in... Wow, yeah! Look at that! You can see them! Can you see them there? Gigantic sort of paper clips. Oh, I'm so zoomed in that just my heart beating is shaking the camcorder. Um, there they go. I don't know if you can see that because I can't see the screen, but those clips there are DCC clips and they're basically making sure that the siding has got power positive and negative, at all times. So that's already done, that's done for us, which is a really nice touch. Um, I'm not really going to be that busy operating trains in that siding on their own. <laughs> um, but it's done and it's ready to go, so that's really good. Okay, I'm back again. Um, I have installed the software, I've watched the video as well, pretty funky music and we're good to go. The only thing I did have to do is, um, and it does warn you, is to make sure that you install the software as administrator. Um, I'm not too sure why, maybe it's something to do with security again or the drivers, but I just right clicked on the file and ran it as administrator and installed it just like that. So that's really simple. Um, it says you need to ensure you have a live internet connection, and I do. The Ultrabook is connected to the Wi-Fi in the house, so we're all good to go. I'm going to go ahead and activate it then and see you again in a second. Okay, I'm back again. I just had to show you this because this is really cool. Um, you can see the shortcuts for my um, Hornby Railmaster software is just here. So if I just double click that, it says, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And there we go. And then if I just zoom in with the camcorder a little bit, um, you should be able to get, oops, sorry. Um, you should be able to get a better view of things. Uh, this is really cool. Um, Railmaster Setup Wizard, language English, it would help. Controller, Hornby Elite, no, we've got the Hornby E-Link today. And then speed limit units, miles per hour, yep, definitely. Uh, train set, so you pick which train set you want. And there's mine, down at the bottom, Western Master with E-Link. So you select that, and then press the green tick. Oh, this bit's scary. Please wait. Oh, the, um, the Ultrabook is working quite hard now. Maybe it's configuring the e-link for the first time. Wow, that's cool. Um, it's even managed to work out the layout I have. This is an evaluation version of Railmaster. You can do the following. Control up to two locomotives, control up to four points and signals, create programs of up to ten lines. Okay. If you have an activation key, which I do. It's, as I say, just in here. Um, enter it now using the activation button. Right, I'll do that then. I'll get all this boring stuff out of the way and I'll see you again in a second. Okay, I'm back again with um, a little bit of a problem or a little bit of a hiccup. A little bit of a hiccup. 
Um, as soon as the software connected, it said um, there's some news, and I said yes, I want to read it. And then there was something at the top about Samsung Galaxy Tab or whatever. I thought, right, okay, whatever. But then it started to say, look, important note for Hornby Western Master customers, which is the set I have and the set you're watching right now. Um, you may have been supplied with the incorrect analog um, piece of track. Um, and I should have been given a digital one. And it says you can tell by just flipping it over and it should say 8206 and it does say um, Hornby 8206. This is the analog one. It also says the analog one has got orange buttons and the digital one should have dark green buttons, um, you know, for the, the, the clips here. So they have provided me with the wrong one. They've given me the analog one. This is not a massive problem, um, but it can cause problems in reading and writing loco CVs uh, to the programming track. So it's not ideal. Um, but again, Hornby have been really good and they've said, look, um, if you contact customer care on blah, 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 you can, that's not the actual number, there's a proper number there, and um, you can acquire the replacement piece, they'll send it out to you. So that's really helpful. Uh, oh, but it does also say that you can modify the track connector yourself quite easily. If you wish to modify the analog connector yourself, it's very easy to do. Um, uh, step one, the analog power connector track has a blasted ramp, blah, 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 blah. Turn the track over and you'll see two small square clips either side of the black piece of plastic. That's true, you do. Uh, use a small flat-headed screwdriver or similar to push the clips through, very little force is required and the ramp will come away. When you have removed the ramp, you will see the capacitor soldered to the power inputs. It's usually blue but can be yellow. Simply cut the two connector wires off the capacitor with wire cutters and remove it. You can then discard it and clip the plastic cover back on. You now have a digital power connector track. We apologise for any inconvenience this has caused. And then there's even more news here about um, using the Apple and Android app. Oh, so there is an Android app. That's brilliant because my phone is Android powered. Um, but we have got iPads and iPhones and iPods as well. So that's brilliant. Uh, seriously, people, this is impressive stuff. If there's one thing that Hornby do do very well, it's all this, all this software, all this computer stuff. Their, their team, the team that they've got there doing this has done a brilliant job. So, so helpful, so thoughtful. Really impressed, guys and, and girls. I'm really impressed. Um, so I'm going to perform that modification then on this little piece of track and I'll see you in a second. Okay, I'm back, and people, we have news. I have you, oh look, I'm all here, I've got my track cutters, uh, well, to, you know, to snip the capacitor off, and I've got my flat-headed precision screwdriver, but I have just flipped the top of this piece of track off, the um, analog one, as they say, and look, there is no capacitor there at all. And what's left are two tiny little bit of wires with space where a capacitor would have gone, would have been. But it's not there. They've done it. They've taken it off for me. So, um, I don't know whether that's just because of the time I bought this, or um, I'm trying to get it back on now, um, or whether it's something that Hornby were able to get done before the unit shipped. I don't know. Um, go back on. Why don't you go back on? Oh, there you go. Right. Nope, that's still not on. There we go. Nope, that's still not on. <laughs> right. Okay, I'll be back in a second, as soon as I've put this back on. <laughs> okay, so the cover is back on, I was just putting it on the wrong way round, as it happens. Oh, I don't know. So, I'm going to connect that back up to the track, and then carry on with the setting up of the software. Right, I'm back. I've activated, activated my um, software. So that's done. i followed the instructions, and I think we're pretty good... Well, I think we're pretty much good to go. Um, you can see that... Um, this being a touchscreen ultrabook, it's really helpful, but obviously you would have this on a tablet as well if you run it on that. Um, and this is quite cool. Look, you can even change all the points. And I can go over to here and change those points. So that's really quite funky. I really do like that. Um, should I actually put a locomotive on then and see if we can get it going, see if we can control it? Um, I'll reposition the um, ultrabook and the locomotive so that you can get a view of both and then let's see what happens. Right, okay, I'm back. This is roughly, oops, this is roughly our layout, although it thinks that we've got a whole siding of track there which we haven't, which is quite bizarre. 
So I'm just going to lean across and put our pannier tank locomotive on the track. Um, I'll put it on that way, like that. So yes, you can just about see that, can't you? It's just, just over there behind the laptop. Okay, so what do we do then? Do we bring up controls for locomotives? Oh, hang on, there's one here already. Oh, of course, yeah, <laughs> what am I doing? Look, um, loco DCC ID number three. It's an 060 pannier tank, GWR green. Brilliant. So, can we get that going then? Do I just drag that up? No, that says it's going to be doing some speed, but it's not doing any speed at all. Press stop. Mm. No, that's not running. That's not moving at all, is it? So, something's amiss somewhere. We'll be back in a second. Okay, we're back. Um, basically, it was my mistake, as is usual. Um, it does say in the instructions quite clearly that um, it might not work because you need to set up the COM port. So I went into the settings on the Railmaster software here by clicking the gigantic spanner, and I set it to COM3, and it's nothing still worked because it does also say that you need to do a restart. So I did a restart, um, I restarted the software and after the restart it checked for updates and said there was an update. So it spent ages downloading the update and then installed the update and then everything closed again and I, I had to load everything up again and then it had to up, update the e-link box and whilst it was doing that the light was flashing and then all of a sudden I was scared to death by the pannier tank just bursting into life and shooting off around the layout. So. Watch out for that, people. If you have got your DCC locos on your layout and the e-link performs an update because you can end up with a massive smash. So that really did scare me to death. I, mean, I was just lying here nice and peacefully, just flicking through and then bang! Oh, gosh. But it works. Oops, sorry. If I just grab the pannier tank loco and put it over here, like that, Watch, if I select um, turtle speed. Oh. There we go. And then if I press all stop. Oh. And then all start again. Would you like to resume all locomotives? Yep. Yeah. And off it goes again. And then I can press stop on the actual locomotive. And then press reverse and then press hair speed, which is 40 miles an hour for this particular locomotive. How cool is that? And then if I press stop again, and then if I press forwards again, and then manually increase the speed this time. So it's coming past at what it says is 30 miles an hour. That is cool. That is really impressive. I think it's brilliant. I just wish I had the accessory um, controller so I could flick the points and everything. So again, I'll, I shall move the Ultrabook around and the camcorder and you'll see me connect up to the wagons and go and run the train. Hooray! Okay, I'm back again. And you'll be pleased to see that if I just pan the camera over, you can see Lego has made a return. Hooray! We've got a Lego pylon just here, lifting the track up above, above the, um, sorry, lifting the cable up above the track so that I can put the Ultrabook in the middle of the layout. And that way you can see everything really clearly. So, okay, Pannier Tank Locomotive, go and pick up your train. So we need to make sure it's going forward and set it at a speed of maybe the hair, like that. And then slow it down to the turtle, and then press stop. Now, if I had the accessory thing, I could just flick the points by dragging the screen up and doing that. But obviously, I haven't got any motors connected to it or anything, so that's, got not, that's just not going to work. So, good old fashioned hand of God, lean in, flip the points, and now I need to select reverse. Oh, it's already selected reverse. Did I do that? Oh, I don't know. Okay, let's just get it to slowly 
back up then. Look at that. This is amazing, folks. Oops. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> the, the driver's not amazing. He's just caused a bit of a crash, but it doesn't matter. Quick, let's go before anyone notices. Let's press forward, and then let's pull it out with the speed of the turtle. And hope that low Mac doesn't derail. No, that seems okay. And let's wait till we clear the points. Right, just flip them back. And then let's manually increase the speed again. Can we go a bit faster? We can. How about that, people? Are you impressed? I am. I think that is brilliant. I absolutely love this. Ah, oh, do you know, the possibilities are just mind-boggling. The things you could do. I've got to get this hooked up to the Engage project. I know I have. This is fantastic. I absolutely love it. You should see my face. I'm just grinning like mad. I don't think I've grinned so much since I was about seven years old and I opened the Lego fire station for Christmas. <laughs> this is brilliant. Let's just stop it. And then press reverse. This is... Oh, this is so good. <laughs> definitely, definitely recommended. Right, I'm just going to play and have fun now. So um, I'll see you whenever. <laughs>